death will inevitably come for us all. But is it truly the end of the road? In the Mario universe, it certainly doesn't have to be. As we've discussed in the past, not all characters from Mushroom Kingdom history survive long term. But in some cases, like with Pauline for example, a departed character is lucky enough to rise from the grave and bask in the warmth of an angry sun once again. This is James and Andres Erickson, and today we're making our case, in no particular order, for five Mario characters who should be brought back from the dead. Sadly, we won't be discussing characters like Koopa Kid or DK Jr., who, while beloved and missed by many of us, seem to have been permanently replaced by others who have more or less filled their shoes. With that said, let's move some gravestones, people! Just kidding, don't do that. That's a terrible line. In case it isn't obvious, when we say these Mario characters are dead, we do not actually mean deceased. We just mean they haven't appeared in a Mario game in a long time, and quite possibly never will again. There you go, we've spoiled the magic. However, in Fawful's case, we do in fact mean dead. He's gone. Life over, body decaying, soul partying it up in the afterlife. Well, as far as we know. At the end of 2009's Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, Fawful seemingly bites the dust after self-destructing in a final attempt to rid the world of the Mario Bros. He fails and takes only his own life. Oops! After his apparent demise, we only see Fawful again in the 3DS remakes, never again in his full glory. Of course, death is only part of the reason for this. The other is that Alpha Dream, the company behind the Mario & Luigi RPG games, went bankrupt in 2019. Therefore, not only would Fawful have to be literally revived to be utilized again, but so would the franchise altogether. Many fans are pleading with the Angry Sun for this to become a reality because not only were these games beloved, but Fawful was a standout villain and an incredibly fun character. The M Dell games were able to expand their storylines much more than mainline Mario titles, which is part of the reason its creators were able to make Fawful so deviously lovable. Players of Superstar Saga, and especially Bowser's Inside Story, spent plenty of time enjoying Fawful's endearing way with words and that wide teehee grin. Resurrecting this iconic baddie would mean more worthwhile game time soaking up his unique brand of madness. I mean, come on, we've seen Bowser return from defeat to kidnap the princess time after time and we hardly complain. Why can't Fawful do the same? Here's hoping the series will somehow return one day, and its true superstar along with it. We have missing you, Fawful. We have missing you. Anyone who's been watching Ericsson Gaming for a while knows we really love Super Mario Sunshine. We still believe it holds up today as one of Mario's greatest solo adventures. It offers ideas and gameplay mechanics totally unlike any other at its time, and that is largely due to Flood, Mario's trusty companion and loyal friend throughout his sunny escapades. However, after Sunshine, Flood was really only ever used again for Mario's moveset in Smash Bros, and as much as I appreciate the Sunshine shoutout, he feels less like Mario's longtime buddy and more like a tortured water hose. But I guess if we're being honest, Flood isn't exactly the type of character who is ever going to be climbing up trees dressed as a cat or executing sick drifts on Rainbow Road. On the contrary, we have seen characters like Blooper and Goomba appear playable in Mario Party, so maybe there's room for Flood in the next roster. Nah, while it would be funny to watch him hobble around and punch people off platforms, I don't think Flood's place is in multiplayer Mario games. He shines, no pun intended, in his origin game as one of Mario's most unique sidekicks. There's really only one option that would make sense for Flood to resurface. Super Mario Sunshine 2. I love original Mario adventures as much as the next guy, but I would welcome a kick-butt sequel with open arms. Now, do I believe this will actually happen? Most likely no, though we did get a Galaxy 2, so solo Mario sequels are not completely off the table. Realistically though, Flood Flood's best chances are a remastered version of the game on the Switch. Recently, there have been rumors floating around, originating from VGC and Eurogamer, that suggest this may actually be revealed soon. We can't know for sure if this is true yet, but we can certainly get our hopes too high. This segment might feel wildly outdated very soon, either in a good way or a bad way. Please, Nintendo, let it be the good way. Really quick, wanted to give a big fat shout out to our sponsors at Gamersups. Right now, they're running a special for those of you in the US who are curious to try their energy drink, GG, which is super healthy and seriously tasty and amazing and magical and all the good things for free. The first 50 people who use code EGUSFREE can get free samples and free shipping. Otherwise, you can use code EG as usual and get the whole purdy tub for 10% off, as well as help support our channel. Dragon Fruit Punch, Blueberry, and Citrus Lemonade are some of our favorites. I highly, highly highly recommend them. Link to their website is in the description. Thank you for listening, let's get back to it. 
Alright, fine, Linky Kong may not technically be a Mario character, but he is an extension of the Mario family, seeing as DK and Diddy are both present quite often in multiplayer Mario games, so leave me alone, okay? Donkey Kong 64 was one of our favorite video games growing up, and I still think about its greatness to this day. I'm not sure about James, but Linky was easily my personal favorite Kong, so I might be a little biased, but come on! I miss this guy! He was so goofy and lovable, I mean, look at him! <laughs> Glad we're on the same page now. Tragically, his last appearance was in the less than stellar Donkey Kong Barrel Blast for the Wii. Why you gotta do him like that, Nintendo? He deserved to be resurrected long ago as an unlockable racer in Mario Kart Wii, but that spot was taken by Funky Kong. Seriously? Why was Funky brought back over Lanky? I apologize, Funky Stans. Sure, he's a cool dude and he's been around for a while, but my guy Lanky was the hero we needed. Truthfully though, I do believe Lanky would have thrived in the spotlight alongside his pals DK and Diddy. Unlike Funky, Chunky, and all other Unkies, Lanky is at least unique aesthetically to our main Kongs, and so is his personality. He was less of a DK knockoff and could easily stand on his own. It's never too late for a comeback, right? Alas, it seems Lanky is the Waluigi of the Kong family. Weird, quirky, dances to the beat of his own drum, and overlooked by his more famous relatives. Next time you go digging through the bottom of your barrel for playable characters Nintendo, remember the other barrel you've forgotten to your left. Lanky Kong is waiting there, sitting right at the top. It's time to welcome him home. I'm gonna be honest, we haven't really played much of any Paper Mario game, so I could be mispronouncing his name, but I'm gonna go with Dementio for now. If I'm wrong, come smack me across the face or something. Like Fawful, Dementio is another fan-favorite villain in the Mario universe who might literally be D-E-A-D, -E as he has not been seen since blowing himself up in 2007's Super Paper Mario. Dementio spends most of the game working for Count Blech, but as players progress, they realize this seemingly submissive jester didn't come to clown around, eventually revealing himself to be the main antagonist. What's so great about this guy? aside from his snazzy design, is his journey from humble servant to power-hungry master of mischief. Dementio has much more dimension, yes I said it, than the main baddies of the Marioverse like King Boo, the Wario Bros, and obviously the most infamous of them all, Bowser. Don't get me wrong, I love all these guys, but we 3D Mario game fans hardly ever get a villain whose motives aren't obvious from the moment they appear on screen. Even if the Paper Mario series never revives Dementio, at the very least Nintendo can learn from him. Maybe this isn't just about bringing him back, but bringing back villains with more depth in a freshly dropped tier. Let him be an example of what can and should be done when writing future plot lines. Let him be a reminder that not only is it okay to take risks with a game's story, but that it's more fun and interesting when risks are taken. I do need to acknowledge that Nintendo has done extremely well when escalating Mario's single-player gameplay mechanics, designs, soundtracks, world building, etc. It's just the stories that have gone somewhat stale. Maybe it's because Andres and I grew up with each of Mario's adventures as they've been released, but we're ready for something different as far as plot goes. So bring it back to Dementio, he is a devilishly bright spot in a game packed with fresh story in a Marioverse. He is proof that more fleshed out characters and plotlines can still work in a Mario game. If the papers can do it, the 3D folks can too. Not only is the Mario Party franchise stubbornly trying to die, but it's killed off pretty much all of its original hosts. Seriously, where is MC Ballyhoo, Tumble, Twyla and Brighton? Even the Star Spirits and Toadsworth, neither original to Mario Party but still solid MCs, are nowhere to be found. What happened to these guys? Why does Toad return but they haven't? If they're meant to be one game characters, then fine, that's understandable. But why also kill off the originality? Having a dedicated host to take charge who felt separate from the playable roster I think was a good thing for this series. The last few games have been hosted by Toad. 9 and Island Tour had a yellow Toad, 10 hosted by a blue Toad, and Super Mario Party had the OG Toad himself, this time joined by Toadette. Cool. What's next, a green Toad? Slow down Nintendo, I can't handle all this creativity. Let me be clear, I love Toad, a lot. I want that guy in Smash so I can repeatedly slam Snake's head into the ground with his tiny fists. But the thing is, we want to play as Toad, not just stare at him staring back at us. He was great hosting the first couple games, but nowadays he belongs on the playable roster. Original hosts made the game feel more like an event, a party, if you will. Having Toad host multiple games in a row just feels lazy, kinda like how the last few games felt as a whole. Super Mario Party was a decent step in the right direction, thankfully, but there are still many areas where the series could use improvements. That whole combo would require a 
separate video, however. Right now we're focusing on hosts. Whether it's an already established character like Toadsworth, or someone born and bred for Mario Party like MC Ballyhoo, a proper host makes players feel taken care of, especially when their personalities fit seamlessly in the role. When the next Mario Party is inevitably planned, I hope Nintendo will consider reviving some of our favorite OG hosts with it, or at least welcome aboard another new character who is meant to lead. Liberate Toad from his duties and let him run free again. Let him run free. Thanks for watching, guys and girls. Don't forget to like this video, because apparently YouTube does pay attention to that stuff, and we would love to keep doing this, believe it or not. And subscribe to Ericsson Gaming for more countdowns like this one, comedic videos like our If Link Could Talk series or quarantine game ideas, contests, and much more. New videos out every Tuesday, live streams every Thursday. This has been James Anders Ericsson. Keep washing your hands, folks.